guys. So arm day today. Uh, so again, if you guys are following along with the split, you know, we're pretty much a push pull lower. Uh, so obviously on our push day, we have some arms, some triceps. On our pull day, we have some biceps, but we still have a dedicated arm day. Um, and again, basically one way or the other, as long as recovery is not the limiting variable, generally unless you, as long as you're taking something else away, um, you know, if you're trying to bring up a body part, it's gonna need more of something. So whether it's a little bit more stimulus, a little bit more volume, whatever. Um, so that's why it makes sense. A very, very simple template I like to follow is push, pull, lower, uh, and then priority body part, obviously, in a way that obviously it's not gonna conflict with any other body parts. Um, so anyway, um, and again, for myself, my arms always need work. Um, and for Terrence, you know, we're getting closer and closer to near perfect physique, which can never really be attained, um, but arms are still kind of a priority. Um, they look really, really good this year to the point where, you know, you pretty much just say it's a good body part, um, but we still want to take them to that level of just like kind of holy shit. Um, and again, I don't know whether it's good or bad or something. I always look back, a lot of the guys' arms in the 80s or 90s, um, it was just always a standout body part on so many guys. Um, and so again, arguably, you know, classic physique now is awesome. I mean, its category is its own thing, but obviously it more closely resembles bodybuilders in the 80s and 90s. Um, so if there's something... You know, if, if it technically, again, just a matter of my opinion, to match the class better, you know, we really want those freaky, you know, round, bubbly, um, standout arms. And Terrence has all the other amazing standout body parts. So anyway, dedicated arm day. Big thing you'll see on this is a lot of single arm stuff, uh, which is tedious as hell. Single arm preacher, single arm tricep press downs. What is the point of that? Um, and again, I always say everyone have, keep in mind the context of how long I've been training. Um, and again, I just say that that's the thing about experience. You can't have it until you have it. <laughs> and hopefully you can listen to me. Um, but again, I kind of did all things you, you know, supposed to do. Um, basically doing skull crushers for a decade and a half, log booking them, progressing them, a lot of overhead extensions, a lot of close grip press. And again, some of those movements are fine, but now it's all just slight variations. Um, and so again, I just can't get away with any fixed bar isolation stuff um, at my triceps. And most guys basically whose arms kind of just stick out their sides really can't get away with that a whole lot without potentially leading to issues with their elbows. And again, there's always outliers. There's some people that have bulletproof elbows, um, but there's some people that do skull crushers and they have elbow pain after one or two years of doing them. For me, I did them for probably close to 15 years before I really started to feel like little bit of pain. And then I'd start to feel a little bit of pain when doing them and it would slowly just progress up over time to the point where it's like, holy shit, my elbows are messed up. Um, and so honestly, it was kind of out of necessity. And I even had people a lot of times when I was doing them, in my opinion, my form was good, it was controlled. Um, I was saying, well, if my form's good, I don't really have to think about this whole alignment thing much. And I had people tell me like, just wait, <laughs> just wait till you're a little bit older. And I'm like, ah, they don't hurt now, why would they start hurting? Um, so again, I share that, not just saying, oh, do single arm because I'm that guy that says do single arm and alignment's perfect and I've always done everything perfect. I mean, joke of half of my experiences, I've made more mistakes hopefully than the vast majority of people watching this have already made. Um, so learn from my mistakes, learn from the mistakes from my clients that I work with. If you want to be in this game for a long time, again, for the casual lifter, it doesn't really make much of a difference. But if you want to be in the game for a long time, just have some awareness of alignment. Um, and again, a simple thing, and I kind of touch on a little bit in the video, is um, just doing single arm is going to be a great way to kind of alleviate a lot of that stuff. So you'll see, obviously, we still do a lot of free weights and stuff where it makes the most sense for, for curls. We did single arm preacher curls, one of the main ones. I think it's just such a good exercise. You know, using the actual bench, using that upper arm, having it braced in the side really eliminates cheating. But again, think for bodybuilding world, eliminates cheating means more weight can be used on the desired muscle. So yes, could you use more weight if I could move my entire body, if I could move my entire upper arm and just do standing dumbbell curls? I mean, yeah, of course I could use more weight that way, but what does that have to do with my biceps? Um, so realize obviously from a training standpoint, yes, weight in your hand matters, but I always say that the effort and the load in your hand is only as valuable as it is well-directed. Um, so again, if other stuff is doing stuff along the way, um, then you're not having the purpose of the goal or having that weight in your hand be accomplished. All right, guys, so just one little note on uh, alignment when we're talking curls. So similar like I talked about with triceps, you know, with the cable, you want that upper arm to align with the cable. Whenever you're using free weights, um, so again, barbells, dumbbells, whatever, for curls, you want that upper arm to be perpendicular to the ground. So basically when you relax your arms at the side, the more your arms kind of stick out. So again, like for me, this would be kind of straight up and down. They just kind of naturally stick out a little bit. And obviously a lot of guys bigger than me literally kind of walk around like this. Um, so the more your arms kind of do this, um, the more likely it is that you're gonna be better off doing single arm stuff. Um, Cause again, again, doing a straight bar, doing something fixed with this elbows flared, it doesn't quite, the line of force from that barbell from whatever it is, doesn't quite line up through the elbow, at least not optimally. And again, the little asterisk for that is, 
does this matter? Again, it only matters depending on the individual. If someone's just doing curls every once in a while, no, probably not a big deal at all. But again, done with the bodybuilding thing, highest intensity, you know, progressing loads, higher volume. And again, if you're looking to do this for decades at a time, eventually that will accumulate. So again, if you're doing a preacher curl, you're doing loads. Again, there's a reason. I don't want my arm out here. I don't want my arm in here. I want my arm basically straight up and down. Um, so again, there's a reason we do single arm. If I did both arms, basically I'm kind of stuck with my arms kind of pointing out. So again, you'd rather have them tucked in. And again, I can't really do that both arms at the same time, so that's why I do single arm. If I'm doing, you'll see me doing hammer curls, there's a reason I don't do both at the same time. What ideally, that's why I do this little side lean type thing. Because again, with both at the same time, if I were to do hammer curls, again, you'll see my elbows kind of flare out. So again, doing this side lean, all that really allows is for my upper arm to essentially be straight up and down relative to the ground and not flared out. So again, that's why you'll see myself, Terrence, whenever we're doing bicep work, 99% of the time we're doing single arm stuff. Unfortunately, it's a little bit tedious. Um, believe me, I'd rather do both arms at the same time, but it's more so just from a longevity standpoint. Um, now again, every once in a while, if we're feeling weird or in a weird mood, you know, will we occasionally do like a fixed bar tricep extension or curl? Maybe, but again, it's all relative, again, within the context of how often are we doing it, how much volume, how high of intensity. So again, take a look at your structure. The more you are like this, you know, the more your upper arm is, you know, away from parallel to the ground, the more likely it is that you should do more single arm work. So again, I love the preacher curl because it's easy to line up. Obviously, you can do single arm. Bracing is great, eliminates cheating, and you can do, relatively speaking, a lot of weight there, obviously, as far as your biceps are concerned. Single arm cable press downs. I mean, I know cables have a notion of not being hardcore, um, but again, it's probably one of the easiest things to line up when concerned with triceps. These single arm press downs, I just want to provide a little bit of clarity for why do I use the cuff or the handle. So if you guys are watching those sets, I've got this cuff, this handle type deal, and that's my preferred grip on this. What the hell is the point of that? Well, not to get into too, too much depth because I've covered this in some videos and I'll talk about it a little bit more, but alignment is huge um, for training triceps particularly. And basically the line of force of whatever you're using, a good gauge is you want it right in line with the plane of motion you're using. Um, but specifically just looking at where the upper arm position is, that'll help you look. So again, the line of force can be a little bit tricky to see sometimes using a dumbbell, gravity, it's most of the time straight up and down. It's really easy with a cable because basically the line of force is the cable itself. So when I'm doing a press down, the reason I like to do it with a cable is it's pretty damn easy to keep this cable and my upper arm right in line. So again, if you want to look from kind of that side, you can see that my upper arm is basically pretty close to perpendicular to the ground. The same is with the cable. So again, depending on where you're looking at, again, this is going to stay basically right in the same plane. So one option is doing what I'm doing right now. It's very easy with this neutral hand position, basically, to keep everything nicely in plane. Keep that upper arm and the cable right in line. The issue is if you just hang on to the cable like this, as soon as you get enough weight, it's pretty damn uncomfortable. It's just hard to hold on to or it might be sliding around or whatever. So the next option might be, why wouldn't you just use like a single handle? And that's not a bad option, but like for me, like a ton of people, is to, for me to have this completely pronated grip, this is the tendency. So kind of tough to see from this angle, but if I want to be here, so again, if I want this arm not here, I want it here, perpendicular to the ground, as soon as I go to a pronated grip, what just happened? My elbow tends to flare out. And basically all that's happening is, you know, if you don't have a whole lot of pronation, so for me, you'll see that I kind of run out right about there. And if I can't pronate quite to my palm face is 100, and, you know, uh, perpendicular, excuse me, parallel to the ground, then basically all that's going to have to happen is my elbow's going to have to follow. So again, this is the position I'd like to be in, but for me to go with a pronated grip, my elbow flares out a little bit. And now this cable is perpendicular to the ground and my upper arm isn't quite perpendicular to the ground. So basically, it's not quite as good of alignment. Someone is saying, is that really that big of a deal? It depends on the individual. If you're just a casual lifter, you know, if you're training triceps, you're a normal person, once a week doing a couple sets, no, it probably doesn't make any difference at all. But if you're a meathead, 
if you're a bodybuilder, you're doing bodybuilder things, training with relatively high intensity, relatively high volume, and you intend to be doing this for decades plus, then from my professional opinion and observation, yes, that shit matters a lot. Um, and so not just from professional experience working with different people. For myself, there was a long period of time where I did all skull crushers, overhead extensions, things like that, which are great movements if they fit. And if not, sometimes the overuse injuries don't start to show up until a decade after you've been lifting. So that's the difference between the neutral grip and the pronated grip, why I don't use a handle. Now, if you're doing this and you can turn that handle all the way down and it doesn't change your upper arm position, then obviously the handle can be a fine option. It can actually be a decent option. Some people say they like to do an underhand grip stuff for triceps. And again, if we go through that same example of not wanting this to happen, an underhand position is actually a very good option to keep that all in line. The only issue with that is and then you kind of run into some grip issues. So again, you could have strength of the grip be the thing that's the limiting factor on triceps. And another obvious option is if you don't have the cuff, you could do a single with a rope. So I would massively prefer people doing this as opposed to trying to hold on to this little tiny cable thing, not really having a firm, strong grip, having this little thing against the butt of your hand. Having a single cable is going to be a lot better. Again, you can keep that neutral hand position, keep the elbow from flaring out, and now you've got something a little bit more substantial to hold on to. You've got something to put your hand up against. And then coming back to the cuff, the whole point of the cuff is it allows me to do all of that, I think, better than any other option. So again, basically, it allows me to have a neutral hand position. It gives me something that I can squeeze and hold on to. And again, I literally have, when I'm doing this, you can't tell, is I've got, if let's say I've got 50 pounds on here, you know, I've got 40 something pounds of it basically just resting on my hand. And then I do grip it strong as well too. So because I have this to press into essentially unmoving, I'm getting to the point where, again, my grip will never be the fatiguing factor. I can still be in a nice neutral position so I don't have that elbow flare type stuff. Um, so again, <laughs> That's going to be a tough one to swallow for some people. Not a tough one to swallow, but again, there's going to be someone out there that says, again, that's unnecessary, that's splitting hairs, whatever. Realize, again, not just obviously for how long I've been training, 20 plus years, but people I've worked with, that's really kind of my area of expertise. If it were just as easy as everyone, you know, doing the big three lifts and looking like Ronnie Coleman, then a lot of other coaches and trainers and myself included wouldn't have jobs. So next time you're messing around with press downs, think about hand position and that's the main reason I think a neutral hand position is going to be a great option as opposed to going pronated or not having some of the limiting factors with grip and strength with some of the other options. a lot of cable stuff for triceps. And again, I think a lot of pressing stuff still makes sense. So we do basically right now, we've done, if anyone's followed for a while, we for a long time, we did Swiss bar close grip press. We'll do that with accommodating resistance with chains from time to time. I'm sure we'll go back to that. I've done dips as a big movement. I actually think those compound movements are easier to line up and can be easier on the joints than isolated elbow extension. So now the compound press that we have is a JM press. Um, and again, I didn't invent that. Um, obviously it's named after JM. <laughs> Um, and again, he, I guess he popularized it and other people named it after him. We do it in a Smith machine and somebody told me that uh, Bill Kazmaier popularized that, which I didn't know. Um, so I don't know to call it a jam press or a Bill Kazmaier press or whatever the hell it is. Um, but it's a great movement and I've explained that in some other videos where basically a jam press is somewhere in between, you know, an isolated skull crusher and a close grip press. And the condensed version is you're going to have more of that load in your hand, create more torque at the elbow and less at your shoulders than you would compared to a close grip press. Um, but also by kind of incorporating motion at the shoulder joint and giving you a little bit of freedom with where you kind of take your grip, it's actually going to be a little bit easier on the elbows than an isolated skull crusher. So really, really good movement. We just do it in the Smith machine uh, because it's a little bit more stable. Um, and so again, I prefer that stability because it basically sometimes transfers to more load. And then I attach that band on there because it's on there. People feel some feelings. They'll look at that like, oh, that's a complicated movement. It's like, well, I have that daisy chain and that band hanging on my Smith machine all the time. And so anytime I'm doing something that's stacking, the same as a band or a cable, or excuse me, a band or chains makes sense on a squat or a deadlift variation or a close grip press variation, it makes sense there as well too. So again, if some people are watching that, like, oh, what the hell's the point that it's overly complicated, then fine, just do it with a barbell, you know, free weight. You don't have to do it in the Smith. You don't have to do it with a band. Again, if that makes you feel some feels. 
it's just you can't really argue that it's a little bit more efficient because basically all you're doing there when you have that stacking effect is you're making it heavier at the top. Um, so again, it's challenging the muscle, um, the train muscles a little bit more in ranges where you are stronger. Um, so we did that, um, and again, that was supersetted with a hammer curl, dumbbell hammer curl. And again, I talk about a little bit of ways to kind of mix up some alignment on there. But the hammer curl, I think for bicep stuff, for elbow flexors, because you have multiple elbow flexors, three big elbow flexors, probably more than that. But the three big ones that people talk about, your biceps, um, biceps brachialis and brachioradialis by going a little bit more of a neutral grip sometimes a prone grip you can arguably bias those a little bit more um, and so again that's why we incorporate that and then for a little bit of pump work a very simple way that I like to do it if you kind of can't feel the structure of the workout is coming off of that jam press the last few back off sets we superset it with an overhead rope extension and same thing for the hammer curls right off of our couple back off sets uh, we went right into cable curls um, and so again those were just done as supersets so if you look at the majority of the workout basically four exercises are what I call log books so all those exercises I named first the preacher curl the cable press down the jam press variation the hammer curl all those are log books so basically those are heavy ish straight sets you know we track those we try and progress those over time and then I'll generally incorporate a little bit of pump work as a small percentage of the workout so literally the pump work itself was probably less than 10% of the time in the gym today. And that's an easy way I'll sneak it in, is basically just at the end of the session, at the end of those on back off sets, after our heaviest sets, just done as a superset. And so again, what the hell is pump work, metabolic work? Basically, it's anything where you're still training in a close proximity to failure, where load is no longer the main stimulus or the main variable. And the simple thing is this is things that bodybuilders have been doing for decades and decades and decades, and everybody just has their little variation of how they like to do it. Um, and so that's how I like to do it. It's basically, once you're at the end of the session, I don't care who you are, whatever exercises you're doing, you're not using peak loads compared to had you done that at the beginning of the session. But everyone seems to agree from, again, what we've been known works in bodybuilding from 50 years ago to now what research shows, even if load's still not a factor when you train in a close proximity to failure, just meaning you're getting close to failure or training to failure, that it still can be effective volume. It can still potentially lead to, regardless of the pathway, muscle growth. Um, so that's the workout. Um, pretty straightforward, pretty simple. We'll keep those four big movements in there um, for a long time, as long as we can progress them and stuff doesn't hurt. Um, and then week to week, I kind of changed up that pump work again, realizing that's a very small percentage of it. But I do think it's effective. When your recovery is good, um, I think the addition of having that in there is an important thing, which is why I like to program like that. Again, on paper, 80 to 90% of a session is meat and potato logbook stuff, and then some pump work after that. So that is the arm session. Hope you guys enjoyed it. As always, if you have any questions about anything, leave them below. If you liked it, give me that thumbs up. Um, and as always, subscribe, share, do all that good stuff. I appreciate all the comments of people getting, hey, man, there should be more subscribers on this channel. I agree, so keep hitting that subscribe button. Keep telling your friends, and I will keep trying to pump out the content.